Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, it's great to see you again and today we're going to be making this really cool colour palette that when you select a colour and press confirm it's going to change to that colour. It's really easy and it's very good for beginners. Anyway, without further ado, let's stop waffling and let's begin. Okay, so inside of Roblox Studio, um, this is what it should like look like when it's done. We have a, a GUI here, we have a button, and then we have our color, pla color palette frame that uh, that is currently invisible. And we also have a confirm button with all the and all the colors right here. And yeah, today I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So let's go. Okay, so to begin, we're just going to go to the main Roblox Studio um, screen, and we're just going to click on a base plate. It's that simple, just on our base plate. We're gonna get rid of the spawn point and we are just gonna be left with our Roblox Studio right here. And so to, so you know where you're placing all your GUIs, make sure you go press this button in the top right, just up here, and, it, and you can go up to here and you can select HD 1080. And that should give you a accurate reference to what it would actually look like in the game so you don't get all the sizings wrong. Okay, so let's just go ahead and begin straight away. We're gonna create a starter GUI I'm gonna call this. We're gonna call this color. Inside of here, we're going to add a text button, just like that, and then we can scale it up to a reasonable size, and we can place it wherever we want in the screen. And then you can go ahead and customize it to whatever you like. I really like this. It's not like fully black. It's a bit more of a. It's one B, one B, one B, and it is really nice, realistic look. And we're just gonna change the text by double clicking on it I'm going to say open color let me do that again open open color palette we can scroll down uh, we can change the text color to uh, white we can um, not gonna actually do text scale we're just gonna change the text size I'm gonna change that to 27 and then we're gonna change the font to Roboto mono mono or or just select from here this is probably easier roberto mono and it should look like that now you're probably wondering how did i get that really nice curved effect on it well that's actually really really simple we're just going to go to the text button we're going to insert a ui corner and just like that we should be given these rounded edges and if you ever want to change it we can always uh, make it like nice and rounded like that but for now, I'm just going to do 0, 0,8. There we go. Change the name of this button to color palette button. Just like that. Okay, so we have our button now. And what we want to do next is actually we want to create our frame. And that is really easy. We can just click on this button and we're just going to insert a frame into it. So hopefully, once we finish clicking this button, it should open up this frame. Once again, we can customize it to a size we want, or what we can do is we can actually make it expand into the whole screen. Either one, either way, it, it's really your choice. But I'm just gonna go with a small, compact UI in the in the left. Okay, so we've got this little outline. I don't want that. So we're just gonna go to board size pixel zero and then we're going to customize it okay so we have our frame here and we're just going to change the name to color palette frame and inside of this frame we can actually start adding the good bits which is the colors so inside of the color palette frame we're going to add a text button we're going to change the name to whatever color you want to make this so in my case i want it to be red so i'm just going to call it red I'm going to change this, I'm actually not going to have any text at all, I'm just going to have a colour. Here we go, red, just like that. Uh, once again, I'm going to add a UI corner on this, but this UI corner, I want it to be rounded, so I'm just going to set the corner radius to something very high, just like that. Move this around, and now what we can do is we can just duplicate it. Move it down, duplicate it, move it down duplicate it move it down duplicate it duplicate it actually no we're just gonna stay with four and if you want to have like lots of colors then you can always use a scrolling frame 
um, doesn't really matter. Okay, so quickly we just need to readjust all of these. So I'm gonna go blue, uh, green, and yellow. And we actually have an additional one, I don't need that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and change the color of this. So blue, uh, green, I think that is, green and yellow. Right, now once we are done, we can go ahead and make this frame invisible. And actually before we do that, we're just gonna go inside the frame. We're actually gonna add another text button. We're gonna call this confirm. We're gonna move this down here. Try and make it uh, not too big, relatively big. Just like that. We're gonna change it to confirm. And change the color to a nice gray color. We're gonna add a UI corner corner and we're gonna make this really rounded once again just like that and then actually and then we're gonna change the text color to white the font to Roboto Mono and actually I don't really like the background color so we're actually gonna change there we go so we've got our nice button uh, that says confirm on it and yeah and actually one more thing I'm going to do guys, I'm just going to scale up the text to just so we can all see it. There we go. Now I think we can finally start programming. Um, yes, so we're just going to make this frame invisible and then we can begin scripting. Okay, so we're going to make a local script and this local script is going to be inside of the color palette button. So make a local script, I'm going to call it to palette palette frame and now we can begin we're going to do local um, GUI and because we are in a, we're not actually making this in the server script service we can easily reference this by doing script dot parent parent and that and you're wondering why 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 do we have to put two parents well the parent of the script is color palette button and the parent of color palette button is color aka the GUI. So there we have our GUI right there. We're going to get the button, so we're just going to do local BTN. I'm going to do this to script.parent. Once again, the, palette, the parent of palette frame is color palette button. We're going to get the color palette, color palette frame. And that, and the way we get this is we're just going to go to uh, script dot parent dot parent dot color palette frame. Oh, actually, I think I've done it wrong. What have I done wrong? I think it's just going to, I know, I think it's just script dot parent color palette frame. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Script dot parent dot color palette frame. And now we just need to get the, all the buttons. So um, local red button is equal to script dot parent color palette frame dot red and I'm just gonna zoom through this but all you have to do is you just have to you, all you have to do is just copy it go down a line change this to the next color you have so in my case in my case blue button and then we're just gonna change this to blue and then you're just gonna do that for every single color you have okay so once we've done that you just need to get the um, confirm button that's what once again pretty easy just gonna go script dot parent dot color palette frame dot confirm and now we can finally begin to script okay so what I want to happen is when we press this button uh, we want the color palette frame to go from visible to we want to get to go from invisible to vi visible so what how we're gonna do that is we're just gonna do um, where is it color palette button well actually where is it? Local button. Uh, is, uh, but no, actually, no, it's just going to be button dot mouse button one click. And it's going to be colon connect to function um, two, two, two parentheses. And we're going to go down and n should be generated. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write color palette frame dot visible is equal to not color palette frame dot visible and you're probably wondering what, what what does that mean why can we why are we not just putting false 
Well, let me show you what that means. So as you've seen in our code, we have used the not operator in a perfect example. And now you might be wondering, what on earth does this actually mean? So let me explain. And in this next slide, I'm just going to show you everything about how it works and why we're using it. And there we go. We just have our code down there. So if we go to the next slide, I actually have made um, I have, I have exact replica of our code. And I'm just going to show you what it all means. So visible accessing the visibility property of the frame. So um, the way we access our visib vis visible property is by using a dot. So think of the dot as going inside of something. So if we go back to Roblox Studio, we have the color palette button. No, we have the color palette frame. And as you can see, this is highlighted in blue, meaning that this is a property. And guess what? If we go into the properties, we have visible right here. So once again, think of dot as um, going inside of something. So here we go, visible accessing the visibility property of the frame. Next, we have the equal sign, which I'm guessing you or guys all know uh, what it means because you actually do maths at school. We're setting, we're saying that this equals this. So setting the visibility, um, setting the visibility equal to whatever we want, whatever we want to put over here. And last but not least, we have not. And you're probably wondering what this means. So in our case, it sets the visibility opposite to what it currently is. So in our case, um, our frame is um, is invisible. And by saying not color palette frame dot visible, this will set it back to true. And a quick tip down here, using the not operator is the exact same thing as color palette frame is equal to false. So if I'm going to, if I'm to go back to my code, this, if I just copy it, this is exactly the same as this. So really, it's just a more, I mean, I'll say more intricate way of saying false. I don't know why people use it. I guess it's just down to preference. But yeah, you can choose which one you really want to use. But just remember, these two are exactly the same. So remember that these two are exactly the same and try not to get them confused. Okay, carrying on, uh, what we've we done here, we've set it from invisible to visible. So we can go ahead and actually play this right now and we can actually see what happens. If I touch this, as you can see, the, the visibility goes from invisible to visible and that is working perfectly so far. And I've actually forgot to make one last thing. We actually need to add in a part to our workspace. And let's just also add in a spawn point as well. Just, so we're going to take this part. We're just going to scale it up to like whatever size you want. Does not matter whatsoever. Just like that. And I'm just going to call this color part. And look, and here we go. And then now what we need to do is we just need to reference make another variable so we're just going to do local parts is equal to game dot workspace or you can just say i think this is an, a new thing that roblox added in you can just say workspace dot color part but just for the tutorial's sake i'm just going to use game dot workspace okay so so far we've got our variables and we've also got the mouse button one click that when we press this button the frame will open Next, we want we want the um, buttons to work. So if we if we press, uh, let's say if we press red, then the the part should turn red. So to do that, we're just going to do red button dot mouse button one click colon to connect to a function two brackets go down and an end should appear. Sorry if that was a bit too fast. So inside of these um, inside of this function, we're just going to do red. We're not going to do sorry no. We want the part to turn red when we touch, when we click this button. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do part, part, if I can actually type it, part dot color. I'm going to set this equal to color free dot new parentheses. We're going to go inside the parentheses and we're just going to get the color of this red button. So we can just go to here and it will show us the color. As you can see, it's 25504. And we can quickly write this in 2550,4. Oh, is that right? 
25504, that is weird. It says it's wrong. Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to do color free dot from RGB instead. Oh, and that's probably why, because we, we didn't actually specify. So uh, we didn't actually specify uh, what kind of color values we want. So actually, let me. that's a good opportunity to show you. We have from RGB, which is red, green, blue. And we also have HSV, which is hue, saturation, and value. Um, you can use either one. It doesn't really matter, but just for this tutorial, I'm just going to use from RGB. And then we're going to do 255, 4. And as you can see, it's red. So now what should happen is if I go ahead and play the game, which I'm not going to actually, because you're going to waste time, the part should turn red. And what what I want to happen when the part turns red, I want the 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 the, the transparency of the button to go a bit um, down, just so it looks like the button is actually being pressed. So we're just going to do red button dot transparency is equal to zero point five. And I'm gonna wait, wait 0 0.5 seconds, and then we're just gonna set red button dot transparency back to one. So now quickly, let me go play this. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm gonna open the color palette, press red. As you can see, the um, red, uh, the red part, the part goes red, and for some reason we have an issue part is not actually hmm, that's a bit weird okay so I know why that actually happened I actually then he sent the red the button button transparency to one and one is actually invisible so we actually need to put it back to zero and let's go try this again open the color palette set it to red button goes dark for 0 0.5 seconds and as you can see the part actually goes red as well so have a look at the button and have a look at the part, they are both red. And that is exactly what we want, perfect. And from here on, it's extremely easy. All we have to do is copy and paste this for as many colors that you have. So in my case, I have four colors. So I'm just gonna three, four. Okay, so once you have that, all we have to do is just change this and the color value, and that is pretty much it. So let me show you an example. We're just gonna change this to blue button. Blue button. Dot mouse button one click colon connect to function just like that and then what you have to do again is we just have to change the um, the color value to blue so zero eight five two five five zero eight five two five five and as you can see the color is blue and then we just need to change this here as well we're just going to do blue button dot trans oh that, that's not right blue button dot transparency uh, is equal to 0 0.5 and then just copy and paste that and then we're just gonna set it back to zero so I'm just gonna zoom through that um, sorry if it was a bit annoying it took a bit of a while but I'm just gonna go through it and I'll meet you when I'm done Okay, so I finally finished that, and the last thing we have to do is make this confirm button. So that is, once again, very simple. We're just going to do um, confirm button dot mouse button one click, colon, connect to function, two brackets, go down, and enter the P. And what should, now what we're going to do is we're just going to set the frame back to invisible. So what we're going to do is we're going to do frame going to do color palette frame dot visible is equal to not color palette frame dot visible and actually just to make it easy for you guys we're just going to set this to false and that should be it for our script once we press what this everything should open up and it should be working fine so let's go ahead and test this and it should be working so open the color palette this opens up and I want to change it to a green and I seem to have a bit of an issue here. It looks like that these colors haven't come back to their transparency. They haven't gone back to zero. So let's just see what's going on. And the issue is, is that I haven't put these to zero. And now it should work perfectly fine. Open color. And then we're going to wait 0 0.5 seconds. And as you can see, 
it's going to go dark uh it's going to go darker for 0.5 seconds and then it's going to come back to its original color let's have a look boom and now we can just select any color we want uh for uh, until our heart's content and then when we finally made our mind up on what color we want we can press confirm and as you can see it stays as that color but the frame disappears and once again we can repeat the process forever pretty much and that is literally it thank you so much for watching i really hope you did enjoy this video and i hope it was somewhat useful to you i might be thinking i might be hopefully making i've been thinking about making shout out to daniel